as a resident of Delhi, as somebody who's lived, uh, I've lived throughout my life in Delhi and worked in Delhi, I feel hurt that I should have nothing to say about the naming or renaming of roads in Delhi. Recently, as I'm sure you are all aware, we came across a short essay by a prominent minister, which was a comparative study of two late 16th century Indian rulers. I don't know whether the author of this essay had the, has the competence as a historian to comment on a very difficult issue. Making comparative assessments for historians is not something very easy. A road, a principal road after Akbar, naming a principal road after Ashok has nothing to do with secularism. It has to do with the imperial traditions of the British. Yet, and that is important, the heritage of New Delhi, the historical heritage of New Delhi is something that we as historians do care about. We would like to uphold this legacy, not because it represents imperial traditions, but because it is about the past. There, at a time when great sanctity is attached to the Latin zone, to go about renaming these roads is actually to attempt to reverse history. I'll come back to this point, but I personally would not like even Dalhousie Road to be renamed because it gives me an opportunity to think about who Dalhousie was and what he represented in Indian history. So much for these roads and their names and why we need to put these in historical context. But more importantly, I think we need to reflect on what this kind of playing around with history, with historical figures, means for history as a discipline. That ministers and MPs with no training in history should stand up and hold forth on important historical issues is a matter of grave concern for us. History as a discipline grows with debates and controversies. These are not debates. These are assertions, often made in abusive language. When I was an undergraduate student and also postgraduate student, there was an intense debate among Marxist scholars about the characterization of pre-colonial society, particularly about feudalism. These were intense debates. And a consensus actually eluded Marxists. There was no unanimity on this issue. And very prominent Marxist scholars, from D.D. Kosambi, Professor Ari Sharma, to Irfan Habib, they were all participants in this debate and contributed to it in a very major way. Therefore, to think that historians shy away from debate, from controversy, is not true. These are debates among Marxists. These are not Marxist historians versus communal historians or historians who are trying to uh, whitewash the history of colonial exploitation. They were important because they contributed to an understanding of India's past, despite the fact that no consensus could emerge among Marxists on this question. The question of terminology is important. Historians reflect on them. As Professor Mirudullah Mukherjee just pointed out, Professor Bipin Chandra thought and rethought the appropriate term for characterizing the politics of Bhagat Singh. When he used 
an earlier term, obviously he would have grappled with the question of what would be the appropriate term to use. Serious historians ponder over these issues very carefully. They are not putting labels. They are struggling to understand and characterize a situation, a politics, an event, developments. And without understanding those processes, the way in which historians deal with their source material, with interpretations, with debates, with controversies, and then to give an opinion is the shoddiest way of handling scholarship. But this is not scholarship at all. These are, as I said, assertions often made abusively. The ABVP, the Dusu president who came to the history department to meet the head of the department and perhaps also Professor Bipin Chandra, because he was unaware that Professor Bipin Chandra was no longer alive. The kind of language that he used, it so happened that many of us were not there that day. But this is the report that we got from the office staff. Because he was insisting on meeting the head of the department and, if possible, Bipin, Professor Bipin Chand. So this is not about history, as Professor Miridhara Mukherjee rightly said. But the tragedy is that history is a discipline which anyone can sort of wade into without the least training. People wouldn't do that with physics or mathematics. And that is why if you were to go to Taj Mahal or Fatehpur Sikri or uh, Humayun's tomb, any guide would give you so-called popular versions. Because popular, again, there's a pro, you know, popular versions, not really popular versions. They are versions which have been created. They are not people's versions of history. But that's a different point. The point I want to make is that guides might give you historical accounts about Shah Jahan, about the Taj Mahal, about Mumtaz Mahal, but they would be very reluctant to speak about the physics or mathematics of constructing the dome on the Taj Mahal. The kind of engineering skill that is involved in that. That is something which even P. N. Oak was not Nobody. willing to do, who had a very different kind of argument about the original construction of the Taj Mahal. So history, yes. Physics, mathematics, engineering, principles of engineering, no. And that is precisely the point. The kind of academic protocols that disciplines have can be easily violated in the case of history. But for other subjects, it's very difficult to do that. And that is why we have to be even more sensitive to the attack on history. That is why it is even more important to guard, to safeguard this discipline. Because what is being done is that the protocols of the academic protocols, scholar, the ways in which scholarly debate proceeds, they are being violated. The way in which debates are discussed in scholarly, in scholarly journals, in scholarly settings, this might seem an elitist thing to say, but that is important for informed debate. This is not informed debate at all. In fact, talking about individuals after whom roads need to be named and just assessing their role is a terribly outdated way of dealing with history. Serious historians today are not particularly interested just in individuals. They are more interested in processes. They are now also, particularly in the last 30 years or so, much more focused on marginalized communities, on Dalits. 
on tribal communities, much more than they were earlier. 1857, for instance, is no longer just about Nana Sahib or Bahadur Shah Zafar, but about Dalit Viranganas, about courtesans, and their place in the revolt, rather than the sterile kind of history which just revolves around certain individuals. However, even more disturbing, and that's a key issue which I think needs to be pondered over, is that this attempt to name and rename roads is, again, of course, not about history. But what is most disturbing is that ultimately it is about roads that are named about after people who, historical figures who happen to be Muslims. Aurangzeb Road was of course about good Muslim, bad Muslim, but Akbar, about which there is definitely a scholarly consensus, renaming that road is about Muslim names. That's why I said Muslim, the identity of roads. Roads are being given specific identities. And these identities, and certain identities are being discarded. It so happens that Delhi is a city which in the pre-colonial period had a large number of rulers who happened to be Muslim. Therefore, it's not possible to erase that history completely. But this is, the best is yet to come, by the way. There's still Babar Road. <laughs> but it's also about have giving names or identities which evoke a supposed glorious ancient past. Thus, Gurgaon, with which nobody should have a quarrel, is to become Guru Gram. I often wonder why in Delhi there is no ro major road named after Ghalib. Why in Delhi there is no major road named after the great mathematician, Master Ramchandra of the 19th century? And why is it that there is this, why is it that, that some rulers are the only kind of figures after whom roads must be named? Why not a Prem Chand Road or a Prem Chand Airport for that matter? But nevertheless, Akbar and the kind of history which is connected with Akbar Road, the naming of Akbar Road, remains important for very different reasons. That is the kind of leg, he's representative of a particular kind of rule, a particular kind of cultural ethos, a cultural ethos which is important for building secular traditions. That is why when we think of the idea of India, these are not names we should consider discarding. It would be to discard our entire historical legacy and whatever is valuable in that historical legacy if we're to go about renaming roads in this kind of Philistine way that has become the sort of norm these days. Thank you.